and I am from Kashmir. Can a girl preach as a daya of Islam through social media by staying in full hijab? A similar question is asked. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. I am Shazia Pathan, a homemaker from London, UK. Is it permissible for a Muslim woman to do dawah to a non-Muslim male? Can a Muslima give a talk in a mixed gathering of males and females where non-Mehram males are also present? The two questions posed were, the first is that can a Muslima be a dai of Islam? And can she do dawah on the social media in full hijab? And the second question is, can a Muslima give a talk in the public wearing hijab in a mixed gathering of male and female is it permissible and can a Muslim do dawah to a non-Muslim male? I will answer both the questions together. The basic rule is generally, as a general rule, a male should do dawah to a male and a female should do dawah to a female as a general rule. There are exceptions. But generally, a male should do dawah to a male and a female should do dawah to a female. As far as dawah is concerned, the question posed was on the social media. Can a Muslima do dawah on the social media doing full hijab? And the second question was that in a public gathering, a mixed gathering, can a woman give a public talk in a mixed gathering of male and female where there are non merams also in the public? First, we'll come to the dawah on the social media, then we'll come to in the public, one to one, or in a public place. In social media, there are various different ways where you can do dawah on social media, depending upon which type of social media you're talking about. Everything has its own speciality. Are you talking about a website? Is it on the internet? Is it a Facebook? Is it on the WhatsApp? Is it on the YouTube? Is it on the Instagram? Is it on the Pinterest? Is it on the Twitter? Is it on the Tumblr? Is it on a snapshot? Each has its own pros and cons while doing dawah, and each has its own restriction as far as ladies are concerned. In general, if you have to divide the types of dawah you can do social media, you can broadly classify into four categories in the main dawa. There are others also. Number one can be as a text, a text on the social media or on the print media, text, mainly text with nothing but text, it didn't matter. Second, so as far as text is concerned, where there is nothing else besides text, a lady has no restriction as long as the matter she is speaking is within the bondage of Islam. As long as she doesn't say anything in the text material, which is haram, it is permitted. There is no restriction. A lady can do with the lady, a lady can do with the gent, a gent can do with the lady. Gent, as long as only one way traffic is concerned. She can write a book, she can write an article, she can mention a blog, I am talking about one way. She can write an article in the newspaper, article in the magazine, article, she can write a book, she can write an article on the blog, she can mention article maybe on the Twitter. If it's a one-way traffic, lady can do to a lady, lady can do a gent, a gent can do to a gent, a gent can do to a lady. There is no restriction as long as the content is Islamic and isn't outside the boundaries of Islamic Sharia. The content should not be obscene, the content should not be haram. It's permissible. This is the first type. Print media, very safe. No problem. But, in the print media, writing in the but while writing an article, you say, Now I want to be a journalist, so I would like a lady saying, I want to go and take an interview of a male. Now she goes in the office and she takes an interview of a male in a closed door, no one is there, only you and the person you're taking interview is a male, is a Nam Haram. The Prophet said, If there are two Nam Haram, male and a female, in a closed room, the third person is the devil. So writing is no problem, but if you say you want to be a journalist, okay, you take an interview only of the females, no problem. But a lady going and taking an interview of a gent, it is not Islamic. Why should she? There are other gents who can take. So writing article, no problem. Taking interview of a lady is no problem. Penning it down, no problem. Putting it on the website, no problem. As long as it's only text material. 
That is the first part. But secondly, if on the social media, along with the text, you're putting your photograph, if it's only ladies watching, no problem. But putting a photograph of a female, you know, wearing a hijab, hair is covered, but face is seen, putting a photograph, it's not visible. Especially when it's a public platform, even the gent can see, so it is not permitted. There's one group of scholars who says it's permittable, but the authentic group and the group of scholars which are close to Quran and Sunnah, it is haram, and it's not permitted for a woman to put a photograph, maybe she puts a photograph on the Twitter account, her photograph, no. yes, she can put any other image of scenery, but if she puts her photograph on the Twitter account where she is texting, okay, texting is fine. In many social media, you can have an account which only you can allow people to come in. For example, you say that you are a girl, you want to have a particular on the Twitter or on the Facebook and it's a private page, you only allow ladies to come, no problem. But even in such cases, Please don't you put your photograph because you don't know. There can be a male who can come in the guise of a woman. You may not know. So if, when you are going on a public platform, even though you are encouraging only females to come in, you cannot put your photograph. You can write text, no problem. But putting a photograph is not advisable. Even if you are very careful of seeing to it that you only allow ladies to come. A gent can come. It's a open internet, you cannot, with all your ability, you cannot see to it that restrict the high throws. Taking that precaution, okay, you allow only ladies. When you're interacting, chatting on the social media or on the WhatsApp or on the Twitter, see to it that chatting male with male is allowed, female with female allowed, but unnecessary a female with a male doing dawa, it is not advisable. Yes, there are some people asking questions to a scholar and that scholar is answering on the Twitter is permissible if it's a male. But chatting one to one, how are you, this, that and giving reply on the spot and all, this is not advisable, it should not be done. We know many a time that there are many sites which are catering to do dawa to the non-Muslims and the female Muslim, Muslima, is chatting with a non-Muslim. How are you and they're trying to do dawa. Even though they cannot see your face, there is no question of hijab because their face is not seen. They are only chatting. So there is no question of hijab. You, you can even type without wearing a hijab. But when you are talking, unnecessarily talking to an opposite sex is not required. That's in an emergency if you do, it's permissible. But generally, let the male do dawa to the male, the female to female. So this is the first type as far as testing is concerned. One way traffic like book, Article, printing material, no problem at all. Even on the social media, if it's one way, but chatting is not advisable. If it's a group, see to it that you don't put your images, your photographs, it is safe. That's the first criteria talking about text and print. The second would be maybe graphics. A lady may be very good in, in graphic designing. So maybe she puts an ayat of the Quran and has a good design behind it, a good scenery or she puts hadith of the prophet and she puts it onto the social media, that's permitted. So she's using her graphic skills in designing as long as she's not utilizing a photograph or not doing anything haram. She graphically designs the post very well, whether it be on the Pinterest or whether it be on the Facebook. But see to it that that graphic is not, it's not involving any haram activity. If she's posting it, whether on the Pinterest, whether on the Facebook, you can also now post on the Twitter, there are various options available now on the Instagram. So the second category will be graphic designing or using your skills or animation. As long as it doesn't break the rule of Sharia, there is no interaction with opposite sex, this second type is also permissible. Now coming to the third type, which is audio, your voice. We know in Islam that voice is the voice of women does not come in the aura, normally. So, the question is that can a woman give lectures on the audio? There are two views. One group says, okay, no problem, a woman can give audio because not the aura. The other group, which is more close to Quran Sunnah, says that a woman should not give lectures even to the gents. And I agree with the second view. Because when you are giving a lecture, you are modulating your voice, 
and Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Azab to the wife of the Prophet, that do not be too compassionate in your wife, lest the other person there may be a disease in his heart. So imagine the Ummu Hatul Mu'mineen who was so pure, for them Allah puts a restriction that do not be too compassionate in your wife, otherwise in the other person there may be a disease in his heart. Imagine all the wives of the Prophet are the mothers of the believers, yet Allah put that condition. So similarly, a Muslim giving lecture to the Muslim woman or to the non-Muslim woman is perfectly fine. But a Muslim woman giving lecture to a non to a Namera male, it should be avoided. Talking is permissible, as I told in my earlier answer. Talking, seeing to it, lowering your gaze, if, if it is required. Unnecessary, no. But giving a public lecture to be effective, you have to model it. You cannot say, I am talking about Islam. Islam has got five pillars. The first is Salah. The first is Tawheed. The second. It will not be effective. You have to model it. <laughs> Even when you are speaking with the ladies, you have to model it. You can't be, you know, without modulation. So, if a woman gives a lecture, only to the woman, no problem. She should see to it that she does not publicize the audio on the social media. And as far as my wife is concerned, though she knows very well that voice is not the part of aura of women, she never had an audio recording. She never encouraged audio recording, no video recording. She always gives lectures in, 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 to the ladies, one-to-one -one in gatherings of 100, 1,000 people, no problem. But always audio and video recording was prohibited. Lately, since last year because of pandemic, where people, all the on-site lectures stopped. There were no gatherings. You can't have gatherings. was at 1,000, can't even have 100, can't even have 50. So then I coaxed and told her that voice is not part of aura. Why don't you give on the social media? So on the Zoom, she gave lecture to the lady, but she saw to it that she did not put the video on, only audio. Because with all your restriction, though when you're giving on the Zoom, you have a control who's coming in. You may never know a gent may come posing as a lady. So that's the reason when she was giving audio lectures, she had PPT, PowerPoint position, that's good. You can have scenery, you can have graphic designers on graphic design, but avoid video. Even if you allow only ladies, you may not know who will break that barrier. So if you are giving a lecture only to audio, to the ladies. It's mentioned on the poster, on the social media, that this talk is exclusively for the ladies. And then it says in the bottom, gents may also get reward if they invite their female relatives for this talk. Indirectly telling them, okay, you can get reward by inviting, you know, maybe your wife, your daughter, your sister, your mother to the program, no problem. But it's only for the ladies. And if a gent breaks the barrier, you don't want them to come, fine, it's his fault. And that time if you're giving audio speech and if there is a modulation, that's his problem. You're not going out of the way to give a lecture to a gent. So in, when a lady is doing dawa on the, uh, on the social media, it is preferable that the social media is restricted only to ladies. Though there is one group of scholars which says there's no problem, there is no restriction, etc. But I agree with the other group which is more strict and more close to Quran Sunnah that even the audio, though it's not part of the aura, it should not be done freely to the mixed gathering. It should exclusively be done to female to female. So in the second category of audio, you can, because whether you have a talk, audio talk on the YouTube or on the Zoom or on the Facebook, you can convert the visual into, instead of the video recording, to a PPT, a PowerPoint presentation, or a graphic design, uh, or maybe a graphic plate comes in. If you're quoting a verse of the Quran, so the Quranic verse comes. You can mention the points in brief. So it's more interactive. And fine, you can ask questions. The lead is asking questions. So you can use the Zoom call for a live talk, or you can have a video conferencing. You can use the social media platform, but see to it that the visual is put off. So this is the third category where restriction is very important. And the last type in the social media is the video. 
as far as video is concerned, as I mentioned earlier, that if a lady is doing hijab and not covering the face, if she believes that doing niqab is not fard, and even I too believe in the opinion of Sheikh Nasr al-Albani that covering the face is not a fard for a woman, but that does not mean she can give a talk in front of a mixed gathering, male and female, whether it be physically or whether it be on the video in the social media. Because though the naqab is not fard, but giving a talk, then her face is seen and the men are watching her, whether it be a live talk or whether it be on the social media, whether it be on the Facebook or whether it be on the YouTube, this according to me is not permitted, though there is one group of mainly the Western group who say it's permitted, but I disagree with them. I agree with those group of scholars. You know, the, the list of scholars is, is big. The Bin Baz, Sheikh Nasr Dalbani, Sheikh Utaymin, all of these, Sheikh Abdullah ibn Jibreel, they are very strict and they say that for a woman to give a talk in front of women is not allowed at all. Even audio. They said audio also, if, if the audio recording is shown, only in case of necessity, otherwise they should not, they should, uh, uh, audio recording should only be broadcast to a lady, but not to a mixed gathering. And I agree with that view. So, on video, she cannot say that I will restrict only the gents. She will say, I'll have a Zoom call, I'll restrict only to the female. It is not possible at all. That barrier can easily be broken. That is the reason I would suggest that a Muslima should not use video recording on any of the social media platform. Because how can you restrict? It's very difficult. Anyone easily can break that barrier. That is the reason best is only audio to ladies. If a gent comes in, okay, the voice is not the aura and it's his fault, he's breaking the barrier. But if you're showing visual, there are high chances they can come in and you are showing your face and that becomes a higher level of thing which is not permitted. Similarly, in a mixed gathering, can a woman give lecture in a mixed gathering with a namaram, even if she's doing hijab and opening the face, not allowed. Now coming to the second question, that can she give lecture wearing a naqab? Now here, again there is difference. That can a lady wearing a naqab give a lecture in a mixed gathering there's one group of scholars says even if a lady wears a naqab in a mixed gathering, she cannot give a lecture. One group of scholars says she can give. I would not say it is haram, but I would say it is best to avoid. Even if a lady coming in a naqab in a mixed gathering in front of hundreds of people, whether a naam haram, I would not recommend. I would not say it is haram, but I would not recommend. I do lean towards the first group of scholars who say that even in a mixed gathering, if she wears naqab, her voice modulation is there, which will be a fitna. And why should she come in the front? There are other gents who can come. In front of ladies, no problem. With naqab, without naqab, without hijab. If she shows the hair also, if it's only ladies, no problem. So, in general rule, a man, a male does dawa to a male. A female does dawa to a female. I know many countries where I've gone. I'm going to a dawa center. There is a Muslim boy who's doing dawa to a non-Muslim girl in a closed room. There's a discussion room, very small, hardly 25 square feet or 50 square feet, and one to one spending hours together. It's haram. A beloved prophet said, if two nahmeram, male and female nahmeram, are in the same room, the third person is a devil. So how can you say you can do dawa? It's very common, especially in Western countries and many other parts of the world. You cannot break the hijab level. Normally, let the male do to the male one to one, female to a female. In writing, no problem. In text, no problem. In print material, no problem, as long as it's not chatting on the social media. Print is the safest. Second would be graphic designing, no problem. Third would be audio, okay, restrict only to audio and see to it that don't involve the male. If they break in, okay, that's their problem, they are doing something wrong. But as far as live lectures or the videos for the woman, she should exclusively do only amongst the women and she should not use any of her photographs, any of her video on the social media. Please. It is, I agree with those group of scholars, they say that women should not use her photograph or her video anywhere on the social media, on any of the platform, whether it be internet, whether it be website, whether it be Facebook, whether it be Twitter, 
whether it be on the WhatsApp, whether it be on the DP, a photograph and a video should not be used at all. And one very important advice, which we also followed in our school, that if a lady is taking photograph, she can very well share the photograph only with the family member. That's it. It's very common that there are females who are doing hijab. Very good. They take out photograph among their friend and they give it to their friend. Okay. It's allowed for a female to share the photograph with a friend. But what if that photograph is seen by her brother, by her father? Because the brother of your friend is not your mehram. No, no, she's very Islamic, she'll not show. My advice is never share your photograph, even with your friend. The only person you can share a photograph is with your family members. Because if you give it to your sister, your sister will show it to the brother, no problem. So even if you're following strict hijab, please make a note that don't share your photograph with your female friends also. Whether it be on the WhatsApp, whether it be on the mobile phone. I would not say it is haram because if you're so confident that, okay, my, my friend has my photograph but she will not show it to anyone, okay. But if she shows to someone, who is the cause of breaking the hijab? You. So my advice is not to give even to your friends. If you are so confident that she is a very good friend, it may yet come in the makru category. Why take the risk? So when you take a photograph on your mobile, see to it, it remains only in the family members. It doesn't grow up and go out in WhatsApp group of friends. I'm giving only to my female friend and she will share. She may not be that strict. So this is advice as far as the dawa for the ladies are concerned when they're doing on the social media or whether they're doing live one-to-one. -one. Hope that answers the question.